Hello there. Welcome to my show. This week I'll be talking about Lastly Unjust, as well as other documentaries by Claude Landsman. I'll also be looking at films versus movies, and finally I'll look at Starship Troopers, which is a perfect way to discuss film versus movies. Okay, first of all, the, the Claude Landsman documentaries. I'll start with the smaller ones, shorter ones, which about an hour long. Really, I mean, these are, I'm reading the box because they're, these are from the Master Cinemas collection. These are Sobibor, Visitor from the Living, the Karski Report. And finally, last than just is the four hour documentary, the end of it. Okay, to start off, we'll look at the Visitor from the Living. Visitor from the Living is a documentary about a man who reported on the Jewish um, Holocaust to the Americans. And it looked at what. Uh, he said to basically to Roosevelt and to all the Americans what was actually going on during the Holocaust. What the whole film actually looked into was um, how people could not actually deal with the horrors of, of the Holocaust, of the reality, how people st still couldn't really believe what was going on because it was so out of uh, anyone's imagination. It was basically it was beyond comprehension. So they knew the Nazis were evil, they knew they had to be destroyed, but they couldn't quite understand that they were actually mass killing all the Jews. They didn't understand it, they just thought they were in the ghettos. And then when the reports came in, and this man went and met Roosevelt and met various people in American uh, government, they would say basically, I accept your report, I just don't believe it, because they just couldn't quite fathom what was going on. So basically how, how the process of how that never really got out as much as people would expect during the war. I mean, in Europe, people knew what was going on, but in America, they couldn't quite... They just couldn't take it. They just couldn't understand how people could be that evil. So that was... It's a very good documentary. The man himself presented himself well, but it's a minor documentary compared to Shore, but it's still fascinating about how, uh, actually, decisions are made in government and how... People can't comprehend the reality of what's going on, which suggests that something that happens again and again. Because I'm sure in any war, reports come in and no one can quite believe them to start with until they get the proof of what's actually going on. So it's an excellent documentary, and it's definitely worth seeing. The next one is the Karski report, which is the man who visited the the Jewish ghettos and did a report saying they were humane. The Nazis were not killing people, and basically how he was fooled. Because you saw from his point of view, of you saw uh, why, he, why he became an investigator for the Red Cross, the International Red Cross, how he could be fooled, and basically how the Nazis prepared all of this so that they could say to the world, look, we're not as bad as the rumours actually suggesting we are, even though they were doing so much worse than the rumours were suggesting. So basically, they showed how this man saw the um, the ghetto and how he couldn't accept how none of them would even hint to him that this was a facade. Like he just thought people would look defeated because he visited like uh, prison war camps and people were trying to say things to him there outside the Nazi view. Uh, but here he couldn't quite work it out but he saw all the yeah, he reported on what he saw which turned out was just a facade because the reality of it uh, basically was that the ghetto was based on mass production uh, stop stopping point for the concentration camps and people were getting killed all the time and sent to concentration camps and it, again it was just like how people could be blinded by um, what they expected to see and how the Nazis were very careful about what they presented to the world. So it's an excellent documentary the, the, the man who talked about uh, his experience, he probably felt foolish afterwards, he already did, but he presented his, his point of view. Again, it was an excerpt from Shoah, which was never used, but it's a really interesting story, so it's definitely worth seeing. The final documentary is Sobibor, and that was about um, how the escape from Sobibor, which was another concentration camp uh, that was mass produced and murder all the time and basically the people who worked there, the Jews who worked there uh, pretty much to death how they 
realised they had to escape from Solid Bore, otherwise they were going to get murdered because the place was going to get shut down and anybody working there was going to die. So they, they created a mass escape, and which succeeded because it, it basically escaped from the, the concentration camp. Most of them were actually captured and killed after that, but it was all about how they did it and how they could work out how to defeat the Nazis and how they could uh, use the Nazis' habits against them. Then basically, again, we looked into the conditions of uh, our death camp and how horrible it was and what it took to survive. And, and it was basically from the point of view of a man who had escaped from quite a few concentration camps before and who finally uh, ended up in Sobibor and escaped from that and they finally properly escaped. So it was a, it's a very good documentary. Again, because it's an excerpt from Shoa, it doesn't feel as strong as Shoa, but it's still very interested about how people escape from hell, basically. The final main documentary is Last of the Unjust, which is, top, which is from the point of view of one of the... There was a Jewish council that who talked to the Nazis, and they were the ones who had to deal with the Nazis in this Jewish ghetto and who had to run the ghetto, even though the, circ- the political circumstances were horrific. And basically, there was a no-win situation. Uh, this man was a final um, Jewish councillor who ran the ghetto. So three of them were all, and the first two were murdered. Because eventually they were going to run out of luck and they were going to uh, alienate the, the, the Nazis. And it was just about how he was trying to survive and how he went to the, when he was sent to the ghetto, what he did to try and ensure its survival. Because they knew that the DD had happened, they knew that. The, the Allies were coming, they just had to survive until the Allies got there. So he was like trying to make sure that the um, that basically people c- kept alive, that uh, diseases didn't spread, didn't give them an excuse to mass murder, and just try to find an excuse to make people survive. There's also the, the fact that you were talking about the, the politics of the ghetto, how it wasn't quite as black and white as people thought, that how there was, there was politics within the Jewish community as well but who gets sent to the death camps and who didn't because friends of friends were were spared and other people who weren't so lucky were sent and it's all basically human nature in hell and how the, the, the basic survival techniques take over and how uh, everybody tries to survive and it's basically a very unsentimental version of survival. This man was very controversial for the Jewish community after the war because he was blamed for lots of things and he never went to Israel after that and he was accused of, I think he was tried even, and then he was found not guilty. Basically, he had to try and survive a, a situation no one could really get out of. So it was just showing over three hours, three, four hours, how this ghetto was set up, how they tried to survive in it, and how they, basically how you survive in hell. And the aftermaths of that, so it's a wonderful documentary. I mean, it's a it's a one documentary that's on par with Shore because it's it deals with a lot of information, but it does it in a very human way, and you actually do feel like it. It's it's more than a talking head. It's actually about showing the location, showing the survival, the politics, and it's just wonderful. It's definitely one to see if you have any interest in human history and basically uh, humanity at its basis. This is one you see. So that's a lot the Claude Landsman collection. Next thing we're going to talk about is movies versus films. And hopefully this won't take very long. I'm just going to talk just talk about a little bit because I think people get confused. And well, the main thing is I think there's a lot of judgment of some of that movie or films that that's almost a judgment to its quality, and that's not really the case. Basically, films are an uns- basically are even towards art, but the main point with films is they're unsentimental, they're focused on reality rather than fantasy, and they're about um, looking at society, human society, human emotion, human uh, imagination, but not trying to indulge in any like um, nostalgia or anything like that that would obscure uh, the reality of a situation. Movies are the romantic side of that. Movies are about the romance of what if, 
like Star Wars is a, is a basic movie, constantly reminds me of what if didn't look into horrors of war. Most blockbusters are movies because they are romantic at heart. Nothing wrong with that. There's lots of movies everyone loves that are beautiful movies and they are in their own way. We have to look at them. each look at our movies and films in two different ways, simply to be objective rather than um, to be critical of what they are. You might as well just say, this is a movie, this is a film. How good is uh, this movie? How good is this film? And judge it on its own criteria. So basically, um, so Star Wars or Pixar film are movies because they want to actually engage in the, the 10 year old version of yourself, or the 20 year old version of yourself. And it's what if, it's basically a, it's a kind of a fairy story which are wonderful because some of my favourite basically movies are that. I mean, Star Wars is one of my favourite Star Wars series. I'm a massive Star Wars fan. But I know what they are. And there's other films which I love as well, which are completely different. I mean, 2001's a film. You can't really judge that in Star Wars in the same way, but you can see both of them are excellent at what they do. You know, so basically you have to see this film is looking at evolution, looking at man's relationship to God, to science, to itself, how it's dehumanised itself. And that's great, and that's a film which is looking at the themes and the actual uh, art is how the cameras move, how the design was created to create emotion, and how that evolves throughout the film to create an experience that's unique and it's art. But... There's also some of the Star Wars, which is just as technically brilliant, which is using a story, it's using um, effects, production design, to create a what-if scenario, which is what if a guy could actually start from nothing and become a great warrior. That's a fairy story idea. But it's a lovely idea, and people get really attracted to that because it's outside reality, and that's what a movie is. I mean, so I think basically you should actually stick to this is a movie, this is a film. Don't be judgmental about it because it's the two different things, but the two different goals. So you might as well actually look at what they're trying to do and judge on that rather than trying to say, I'm judging this movie from a film perspective and it fails, which is something a lot of critics do and it's ridiculous. In the same way as uh, if you look online, a lot of critics who look at films as if they're movies. This didn't move me in this way, and it was like, well, that was not the intent of the film. The film was meant to disturb you, not to move you, so you have to try and create the criteria for what it actually is and judge it from that. So I think that that was the main thing I was interested in. And it's also when movies try to be films and fail. I mean, one of the things that do bug me when watching movies to try and be films is the they want the respect of a film, but they want it to be, um, they're still based on movies. They're still doing wish fulfillment. I mean, one example I'd give is The Dark Knight, which got great reviews because as a movie, but some people want to say, it's a great film, and it's not. It's not really not, because if you look at it, it's like a guy who dresses up as a bat, trying to stop crime, and crime is a very complicated subject, which can't be stopped by any one person. It's something that's, never been stopped in human history and this film treats it that seriously as if this man can stop crime which is stupid, it's a stupid idea or even a create change it's still a dumb idea that it takes hundreds of thousands of people to try and change anything not one person and they create the, all these scenarios with Joker which are just great movie ideas which are pulp and they're fun and they're great fun to watch but they don't really have anything to do with reality in any way and um, the people I give respect for. I mean the best example of, I find is if you look at the Dark Knight with the, the finale sequence in the boats where there's two, there's two boats basically both have bombs for their boats so there's civilians and criminals and the civilians have the, the, the trigger for the bomb and the criminal boat and the criminals have the bomb for the civilians boat and neither side blow the other boat up. And that's a movie idea. It's not, a f you know, because if you look at reality and history, any history, 
of the bonds near the Holocaust, things like that. Both boats would have been blown up. <laughs> There's no way that would not happen. Somebody would have blown up the other boat up in retaliation. Some would have. So I mean, as soon as as soon as there was, there was one suggestion of one boat would blow up, the other boat would have gone as well. And it's like, then people say, well, "That was in this film, and this film is art. It's a film. And it's like, no, it's a movie. It's a movie idea. It's not serious. You can't be serious." I mean, I like Christopher Nolan a lot. I mean, I love Prestige, and there's quite a few other films I really like his, but. The Dark Knight trilogy is it's probably his least ambitious films. <laughs> like the films he makes outside of that are far more ambitious, far more interesting. Those are his basically his payday films. And people try and take them seriously. And it's like I love Batman's one of my favourite pulp characters. One of my favourite comic movies is Batman Returns. But I don't take them seriously as films. I take them seriously as movies because the movies that are, are about, about myth and about how people see society. But they're different things from films which are trying to be more objective in society. So that's my discussion on movies versus films. So um, next, my final, final point is Starship Troopers, which is basically a film that looks like a movie. <laughs> because Starship Troopers takes, is made by a guy who survived World War II and is a European director who has very cynical views in society that if you've watched Robocop or Total Recall just come through, if you watch something like Soldier of Orange or, or even later you see something like Black Book which is about the corruption from the resistance he's a very cynical director but realistic with a cynicism about what people can be in the worst situations and when he went to America he actually got trapped within these blockbuster movies that what entirely linked his sensibility. So they became more parodies of movies than movies themselves. So by the time we got Starship Troopers, he made a movie where the Americans were fascists. And basically it was all about every cliche of Americana, like we're the good guys no matter what we do, um, but we're man's conquering all, and basically a bit um, the military um, how it always wins and he just turned them on on a set basically showed this is a society that only wants to destroy our societies because its objective is corrupt and it corrupts everyone inside it and the people within that society are so taken with those ideas now that they can't see the way outside those ideas so they just become victims of a war that is a dumb war that has no point so that's basically the movie is it basically is the underlying themes of the movie are that it's a story of a corrupt society. On the surface, it's a giant bug movie because he throws in sequences of these people fighting bugs. And in each sequence, lots of people die. They set some characters who you you see for about 20 minutes of the film who then all die instantly, as if what would happen in a real war we create relationships. If you went to a war, most people would die straight away. And the whole thing is, you meet people, they die. You meet most people, they die. But within all this reality, you get this facade of the fighting giant bugs. And basically, and the war is right, and all that. And it's ridiculous. And it takes up every weird political thing you see in any war and just turns it on the viewer. And it's, would you like to know more, is the catch line, because it's a joke, because... They don't want to know more. They don't want to know anything. So it's a fascist society. And it's hilarious. The whole movie is hilarious. Okay, one of the great things that starts with Troopers is basically it's about how people within a fascist society see themselves. So they become very vacant and they talk very stilted because they believe in the lie that's created this society that they want to be in. So you see it in the films, the higher actors who are not the best actors who deliver lines, deliver emotions in a way that's not quite right and you can see they're not really thinking about it and make decisions sort of kind of cold and it's fascinating to watch because it's a parody but they're, they're getting actors who can't quite deliver uh, emotions that are complicated as if they believe them so it's, it's a really funny and really darkly humorous film 
And it's all about how society actually uh, is a parody almost of, or fashion society is a parody of real emotion, real life. And then they just they take it everywhere and take it to the, to the war, to the giant bugs and shows them an absurd war. <laughs> a fashion society with an absurd war. So it's a hilarious film. It's definitely worth seeing. It's, it's wonderful. Well, that's the end of my little movie th movie uh, show this week. I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, next week, uh, I'll be doing like some movies which are more fantastical, like How to Be a God. So hopefully you enjoy that as well. Okay, right, bye.